Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we got the bug back, as you can see. We're gonna do a little tune-up on it here. He gets a random misfire number four once in a while, um, and these things are bad on coil packs. Uh, so we're gonna show you after how to test on that. Right now, we just stick the fuel filter and uh, plugs. Like I said, he said he, this car has 270 some thousand on the original plugs. Um, it's probably just that. So let's get at let's get at her. Okay, so let's get this stuff out of the way. First off, I'll do a tune up on this baby. There's a 10 back here. Gotta yeah, take that off. Okay, so you get some of these spark plug wires off. Um, they actually make a special pair of uh, spark plug boot pliers. And now, um, the last video, it was number four we had the trouble with. So we're going to go right after number four. And I got these old pliers here. You got to try to grab wire and you got to have to twist it. Which I should have brought my spark plug pliers, but I tried to do it without it. I got to pull out my fingers. Sometimes you give them a twist first, it breaks the rubber away from the porcelain. And uh, yeah, so let's unhook this. Yeah, this other way. You can see it there. Hope I'm not boring anybody. No, you don't want to break the end of that steel thing off. So anyway, the idea is to give it a twist, work it back and forth, and then pull it off. Okay. Kind of like that. And then we go and pull it off. Like that. I used them uh those uh miniature channel locks there. Anyway, spark plug pliers work a lot better. They were not worth that much. Okay, so there's your spark plug. We're gonna have a look inside the terminal there and I don't see any corrosion and I don't see any spots where it's been arcing through so okay the next step is get some air line out here and blow the dirt out from around the hole um, sometimes you can get away without doing it this one you can see down here on number one you can see all that pine this thing sits under pine trees now you can see all the pine quills I hope that turns up um, down inside there so Okay, get the air line out and blow her down in there. Okay, if you're like me and you can't find your air blower because you forgot it at work or you don't have one, you can actually use just the fitting like this. Your air line, just, you gotta kink it over in a 90. It's not real good for your air line, but if you're stuck and you got nothing else, no other way of uh, doing it, this will work. If you can get it plugged back in, that is. Like that. Just like that, guys. You see, it? not real good on your airline, but it works if you're stuck. Now, when you're doing dealing with aluminum heads, it's better to take out the plugs cold um, to warm. Cold is better. You don't want to pull the threads out. Now, supposedly, this car has never had plugs, but um, as with anything, you just never know, right? I deal with uh, all kinds of different stuff every day, especially with the service manager. Anyway. You'll get a feel of it. You can even spray some spray down in there to help loosen them up. They say to take the plugs out cold though because you don't want to take the threads out of the head. That would be very bad. Or it's slightly warm. This one's slightly warm. So Now pull the plug out and we're going to see if this ever had plugs before. Or number four is the cylinder we're having problems with. Um, we're going to check the ignition wires after this. After they get it all done. I'll show you after. Now see these got a platinum plug in it. But it doesn't mean it's any good. And JK. Well, I don't think that's original. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Volkswagen. It's got 270,000 on it. Um, by the color of it, it's running a little bit lean. So that could indicate a problem. You can see on the bottom side, the insulator didn't wear itself. It wore the steel out. But it's burning nice and clean. It's not misfiring. You can tell or it'd be wet and black. Anyway, let's get the rest of the plugs out. And we'll take the air line back down in there and blow a little bit of a crap out that's left. 
from when we took the plug out. Now this is number two plug. This is the hardest of them all to get out. And you can see that, look at the gap on that sucker. That's probably about freaking 90 thou gap right there. Now, did they change this one? Maybe it's never been done. It doesn't. It looks original, but why is that? The gap on that one burned off compared to number two. Oops, get in frame here, which is not. Kind of weird, eh? Anyway, let's get some. Now, after we got that done, we're going to go back in and blow all these holes out. We're going to install the new plugs. So I'm using these copper plugs because uh, my local parts store doesn't even have a listing for platinum, which is... Uh, I find kind of strange. Anyway, these will work. They're probably better off with what's, what was in there. Everybody has their own preference on what type of plugs um, you want to put in. Obviously, platinum are better in some respect. Maybe not in a Ford because uh, they have a tendency to seize in there. Anyway, what you want to do is get yourself a gapper now and uh, gap these plugs too. Now, if you look under the hood here, come here, guys. I'll take you over here. There should be an information sticker here somewhere on your vehicle. It gives you the missions group, tells you what it's supposed to have on. Anyway, if you read down here, tune-up specifications. Um, it should tell you in here somewhere. Maybe not this one. Doesn't look like this one. It usually tells you the plug gap, which for some strange reason, reason this one's not telling me. It's telling me everything else. Vacuum diagram. Anyway. Um, I'm gonna say these are probably either 45 thou or 60 thou. It looks like 45 thou. Uh, anyway, double check online if you can't find a sticker under the hood. Looks like this one might have a sticker up here and it's come off. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go check and then get yourself a good spark plug gapper, which I don't have here right now, and uh, gap your plugs. Now, one more word of advice. Double check your plugs. Don't always tr tr eh, trust your parts supplier. Um, and what I mean is, we're going to check the length of these plugs, make sure they're not too long from where they sit to here. Because if it's too long, the piston will come up and smash that and close it. Now you can see these ones are a little bit different. That's okay if it's a little bit shorter, like a couple millimeters, as this one is. Anyway, people have bad days, they'll give you the wrong parts by mistake or it's packaged wrong. So always double check your parts before you start. Okay, let's ram these plugs back in. Um, now you can put some uh, anti-seize on these if you want. Some people don't, some people have grease. Anyway, ram your plugs back in and always start them by hand. Sometimes I've uh, got a piece of vacuum hose to fit on the end here and long like that and then use that to start it in. Always start them in by your fingers first. Never use the ratchet. Now you can use the extension like this because uh, this will cross thread things and you'll be in a hurt situation real fast. Okay, get all your plugs back in. Put your plug wires back on and uh, you should put some diamet, uh, not but whatever they call that grease. Uh, I can't think of the word right now. Anti-corrosion grease on here on the end. Dielectric grease. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. Oop. Just like that. Okay, you might have to come up with some creative ways to put the plug wires back on. Like when I'm using this wrench to push the boot back on. Anyway, get it all back together. We're going to leave the top off it. We're going to take care of uh, a little trick this minute, buddy. Yeah, and... Uh, we're going to show you how to check the spark plug wires and that, see if they're leaking. What I mean leaking, you'll see it on me this minute. Now before you go starting it here, clear all your tools off the engine compartment. You get a wrench fall down in that belt, you're going to know it. Okay, start up. You see right away it has a misfire. That's not going to help it. Oh, 
Okay, so the misfire could have been some dirt down in there. I'm not sure. But this little hose keeps popping off too. Seems to be some kind of uh, crankcase ventilation doohickey. I'll have to check into this some more. Let's get the fuel filter on it next. Then we'll show you how to check the wires, see if they're uh, leaking. Uh, you know, anyway. Okay, the fuel filter is on the passenger side in front of the back wheel. Oh, okay. There's the beast right there. Uh, they got these funny clips on there. You're going to have to remove some of the stuff right here just to make life easier. You bend that emergency brake cable out of the way and take this line off. And you can probably unclip it at the back a little bit if you want. Okay, so we moved the parking cable out of the way. And that one, now we're gonna take a star screwdriver or straight and gonna loosen that clamp right off. Probably gonna open it up right away. All the way. Okay, with the gear clamp removed, pull this little bracket off there that holds on that plastic line. Right there. And then, thanks. Okay, I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out one hand and no light. Um, let's see if this will work. Now, on the top side of this thing, you see that little bump. Pinch out your finger, and you should be able to push in on it. Oop. I'm gonna need two hands to do this though. There should be a spot on this. You should be able to push with your finger, and that'll release it. Sometimes you have to push in on this fitting into the filter to get the release. So I'm gonna have to put you guys down for a minute. Now before you pull the old one off, the lines, make sure you have a new one handy. It says in and out right on it. Normally the lip will be the outlet if you get mixed up. Now get that ready. Okay, save the cap off the new one. You can plug off that pissy gas line. Now these Volkswagens are really a pain in the ass. Um, I wish I could show you guys. The fuel line it's up there like this in the gas line. You got to rotate it a bit and that piece right on the top I don't know how this is going to turn out on here maybe not that great it has to be pushed in. And you see how it's going to step on it? Well you can't do it with your fingers I ended up using a pair of pliers like this and getting it on the top like that and giving it a squeeze it's kind of a pain in the ass I hope this turns out anyway that's how I did it now I gotta go up there and do the top one and get full of gas. <laughs> anyway guys, I'll get right back to you in a second. Yeah, I got that son of a gun out. Um, we're gonna blow back through the outlet and see what we have in the fuel filter. He said it was original equipment. It's hard to tell. Let's see. It is a Volkswagen Audi filter. see the dirt in it. And it's fairly hard to blow through. <clears throat> well that could be because of a check valve. Okay, we can see the dirt in there. Let's try it the other way. Just for shits and giggles. <clears throat> I'm having a hard time blowing through that. So that could be our misfire right there. You can see on my spark plugs that this thing was running lean a bit because they're white um, and that would definitely show up on the e-test under uh, the NOx part of that nitrous oxide okay now to reinstall the old one we're just gonna do the opposite now your my hose clamp broke coming off so we're gonna get some tie downs and make sure we tie that up there put all that back in place so yeah so inlet outlet you know it goes up there like that now I'm trying to show you guys this stupid hose clamp uh, fuel line clamp because I had a hard time with mine. Um, what I did is I got up there and I squeezed that sucker like that. You can see the step into that. Now you have to push that down. That's all on the top side and you won't see it. And this one was stuck. So it was awful hard to release. Okay. Now putting it back in you should just be able to push it in and you should be able to hear a click. If you don't hear a click then it probably didn't get locked and you gotta watch that 
bump right there comes up. You can see how it's pushed down right now. Um, put the fuel filter in, and then if you hear the click, pull it back out. Pull back on it, and if it doesn't come out, you got it locked. If it comes off, then you have to push it in harder. Okay, I'll put you guys down for a minute again. Now this is going to look funny, but this is the new filter, and you can blow through this fairly easy. Both directions. Now that filter, there's something wrong in it. Uh, maybe I'll cut it in half for you guys if I get a chance, and we'll see what's inside. Now I'm not sure how this is going to work out, guys. I need to get a set of ramps and some lights so you guys can see what I'm doing better. Anyway. This is the inlet side right here. Uh, listen closely. You hear that snap? Okay, that's in place. Now we're gonna grab a hold of the line and pull the filter and check. Okay, that snapped in place. Okay, next one, the bottom one, and that clipped in place and pull back on it, it's in place. Good, now we're gonna take some tie downs and we're gonna get up in there. There's a little step on the side of the tank and I'll bring you guys around so you can see. Forgive the camera angles, guys. I said I'm not set up for this. All right, see that little stepper thing? This minute, I can't see what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. There's a little stepper thing on the tank right there. It's not on the frame, it's on the tank. You have to get your tie, tie down around that, around the fuel filter, and around the clamp here. It's gotta go on top of this clamp to hold that one line. I think it's an EVAP line, okay? Now, Oh man, hey dog. Oof. With that done, we're gonna prime the pump and we're gonna kill this radio. Turn that off somehow. All right, we're gonna cycle the key three or four times to pump it up and we're gonna go back and check for leaks. Okay. It had a little miss, not as bad as before, but that could be because of the fuel pressure low. Okay, we come back under here. We're gonna look for leaks. We got exhaust leaks on that resonator right there. Everything's original on this thing. Okay, we're gonna check up here for leaks. Nothing there, nothing there. Everything's tied down real good. Okay, let's cut this old fuel filter apart. And I'll show you guys what happens when uh, Fuel filters like this get plugged, that'll take your fuel pump out real real quick. That's usually the number one cause of it. It only changes their fuel filter and it plugs it up, takes the fuel pump right out. Okay guys, I'm gonna cut this apart for your benefit so you can see what's in there. Um, I cut the last one, it has sugar in it, just so you guys can see. I was trying to get it open without using the grinder, but it's gonna take too long because I didn't want uh, the filings in it so you can actually see what's in there. Anyway, let's cut her open. Still not going to come apart because she's glued. I was hoping I could get it apart so you guys see how these things get plugged up. Apparently, it ain't going to work. Oh, here it goes. Oh, man. She's a stubborn one, Mr. Grinch. Oh, man. Okay. You can see there's nothing really in there. There's no check ball or anything, just in and out. And what happens, these papers get full of dirt and uh, harden up. I'm gonna put air to it, see what happens. <sighs> Blows better now, but you can see how dirty it is. Look, that's just coming out the filter. I mean, where, wonder where, what people put in their gasoline. How does that dirt get in there? Mind, don't mind that stuff, that's aluminum. aluminum bleh. Aluminum, aluminum, aluminum filings, but uh, you see these things just get dirty. Number one reason, number one cause, fuel pump failure, right there. Anyway, you seen it here first. <laughs> okay, if you guys like that, give me a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Uh, you can see in the background, still haven't got the cover on it. 
It's $265 for a 18 by 24 piece of uh, shrink wrap for the boat. Um, that's the best way to go, I think. Anyway, just a little update on that. We're waiting on that. I should fill it full of wood and put tarps on it, but anyway. So there you go. The 2002 Volkswagen tune up, tune down, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the only thing I would add to this is check your air filter and add injector clean to it. Okay? Talk to you guys later.